Maya and her brother Marco sit down at the kitchen table to start their school day. In homeroom, Mrs. Vasquez greets Maya and helps the class get organized for the day. After reciting the Pledge of Allegiance, everyone heads to first period. In English, Maya's excited to participate in a discussion of Anne of Green Gables. Yesterday, she read a chapter and watched a video with questions to help organize her thoughts. Maya's teacher helps the class explore the story's setting, including the time period culture and geography. Next is math, and the class reviews some proportional relationship problems from the previous day. Mrs. Chen watches them work while giving individual feedback using Zoom chat. At the end of class, everyone answers a few questions, which helps Mrs. Chen tailor the next day's lesson to their understanding. In history, Maya participates in a lesson on Lincoln's House Divided speech. Mr. Baldwin annotates the text on screen while asking the students questions about virtue as well as facts. Maya loves the speech and feels inspired by the abolitionist's courage. Maya plays a fun review game with her classmates in Latin class. Then in science class, there's an experiment. Together, Maya and her dad watch a short video about the role earthworms play in making healthy soil. Then they go to the kitchen and take out a small container from the refrigerator. Maya guides her father through the experiment and takes careful notes as he drips water on the worm. When the experiment's over, they take the worm outside and put it in the garden. At lunchtime, Maya and her mom sit on the back porch with peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. On the laptop, other families are on screen for a lunch bunch meeting, chatting and telling jokes. With all her live sessions done, Maya has a flexible afternoon. She stays outside for art class, spending an hour filling pages in her sketchbook. After that, she heads to the den to read Anna Green Gables. Finally, it's time for soccer practice, and Maya goes to play with her friends. Back at home, Maya sets the table for dinner. When the family is done, Maya finishes her ELA homework, and her mom comes to help with math. Together, they watch a short video, then Maya attempts some new problems and submits a photo of her work. She had some trouble, but that's okay. Mrs. Chen will help her understand everything tomorrow. Her homework finished, Maya closes the computer and goes off with her mom to read together before bed. Tomorrow's another big day at Great Hearts Online. I honestly love Great Hearts Online because I have so much flexibility in my schedule and I'm able to finish school a lot earlier and I can go and do extracurricular activities. Like personally, I like to do golf, so I might be able to do golf lessons. We're able to work on things like writing, prompts, and literature, and we're able to do science experiments in class or on Zoom. With Great Hearts Online, it definitely eliminates the possibility that you would maybe leave a, a map textbook at school and then you wouldn't have that but with Great Hearts Online you don't have to do that like you can just have your books right there and you don't you don't worry about leaving it somewhere else and then not having the homework I just love Great Hearts Online Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I am delighted to be able to introduce you to some of our, um, our team, to one of our families, uh, and to be able to answer questions as we go forward uh, this evening. My name is Heidi Vassiloff, and I'm the Executive Director of Great Hearts Online. Um, Great Hearts, regardless if you're in brick and mortar or online, is all about our commitment to cultivating the hearts and minds of our scholars. We are, we are very much a school uh, that believes in um, seeking truth, goodness, and beauty, and doing that through classical uh, literature and classical expression. We are very rigorous in terms of a school with academics, and also we're passionate about building up children in their capacity to love and care for each other and to live well in our society. 
Um, I'm excited to have you uh, join and learn about us. Uh, we are an online school and um, we are definitely partnering with parents and families um, to make this uh, opportunity available uh, for us and for your, your students. One of the best parts about being an online school is you can live anywhere in the state of Arizona and participate in our program. Um, one of the uh, critiques that I've had, I grew up in a very small town, was that I was only only one school was available to me. And in this environment now, um, the doors have been opened and we invite you to join us in this journey through classical education. Uh, to do that the best though, it's let me introduce uh, Jamie Tordick, who is the headmaster of Great Hearts Online. Uh, good evening, Jamie, how are you? Hello, I'm doing great, thank you. I'm so pleased that you're here tonight to talk about Great Hearts Online Arizona. And uh, I should mention we have a Great Hearts Online Texas as well. And so we'll add Arizona to the tail as we go. Um, Headmaster Tordick, uh, would you please share a little bit about your vision for the school, uh, how classical education actually manifests in an online school? Because that seems like it could be in conflict with each other. I would love to, yes. Yeah. So even in the online environment, we're able to really study the classics, books that have stood the test of time. And one way we do that is we imitate great work. So as a student learns how to write, they study great works of writing. As they learn how to draw and um, get basic art skills under their belt, it is through the, um, the wonderful artwork that they study. So art that has, again, stood the test of time. Um, we have amazing teachers who are passionate about what they do and they're experts in their field. So they just love their students and they love the time that they get with their students. So that passion really, um, really pays off. And we also employ a Socratic method of teaching. So as the students are learning, they're in discussion with the rest of their class. They're in discussion with their teacher. They're encouraged to have a depth of inquiry. And um, we also educate the whole child. So it's not just about academic learning and academic discussion, but when we can weave in uh, lessons on virtue and what does it mean to be a good friend? What does it mean to be a good citizen? Um, we talk about all those things in class during live time and the students also in their own time, um, they study and read and um, work more on those lessons that they've learned in class. I love that. And you know, one of those things that it does feel like it's conflicting, right? Like you're talking about online and technology. How does that really hold with classical literature? So we read books that are classical, that are older, uh, that bring hopefully a virtue forward. Um, what are some of the ways that maybe a lifetime uh, engagement might work for a scholar or for, for the teaching and scholars in that space? Yeah, that's a great question. So scholars might read um, a chapter ahead of time and they come to class and the teacher will guide them through a great discussion. So they can type into the chat in their Zoom class. They know how to raise their hand. They have signals that they've learned ahead of time in order to participate. And they learn how to disagree with each other in a really respectful way. They care about one another, even when they might not agree on what the literature is saying or what kind of virtue um, a character is displaying. So um, I love that they can learn in a safe environment where their input is valued and they're cared for and they're, they're protected in that environment as far as how students treat one another and care for one another. They can have that um, intentional conversation where they can share their ideas and back them up by pointing them out where they um, read that in the book. But um, students learn how to be very respectful of one another in that environment, and I love that. I love that too. It's something that I have enjoyed seeing over the years, and it's it's remarkable to see how mature they can be and how, how engaging they can be with each other. Um, another part of our, our curriculum is that we try very hard, and I think we've done a really good job, with not having it be a stale, lecture-based, you know, curriculum that they're going through where they're just looking at a talking head. They're engaging in the way that we talked about, but we really believe in joy. We believe that learning should be joyful. What are some ways that um, that we bring in beauty and joy into a classroom setting and in an online environment? 
Well, I think um, one way is a little bit of what I was sharing before, just that civil discourse. There's safety in that. And when there's a sense of safety, um, the students are free to feel joyful and be able to celebrate and be part of their learning process. So we really do um, continue to encourage just students to learn how to learn and really um, have joy in that and um, celebrate with one another their learning. So um, we encourage that depth of inquiry. So asking those questions. We have Literary Character Day where they get to dress up as some of their favorite literary characters. We have celebrations of what the students are learning in history. Um, our, our teachers get very, very involved in their science classes and history classes. This is one example of where they just um, encompass whatever that it is they're teaching and the students get so excited. We've had so many different days where um, there might be possibilities of meeting in person for some of our students, um, but also just in that online environment of the student or of the teachers bringing the learning to life for the students. So even though it's an online environment, our students and families have shared that they feel connected. They're um, making friendships, they're building community. And because the teachers really make it come alive for them. Um, there's also spirit days. Uh, one example of a celebration would be the Egyptian museum where the students dress up as you know, an Egyptian goddess or god and they talk about who they are and what they do during the day and share that with each other and the parents might be invited to that. Um, we have spelling bees and just different opportunities for the students to shine and um, each shine in their own way. So we have a lot of fun. I love it. And we have teachers that are filled with joy. I mean, I think that that picture that we just saw is just one small uh, example of our teachers who really love, they love what they're teaching. They love teaching. And uh, that's very exciting as well. Um, Headmaster Tordek, I'm going to invite you back at the end when we have questions and answers going on. Uh, but thank you so much for sharing a little, giving us a little peek into Great Hearts Online Arizona. Thank so, you. Um, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Um, I'd like to next invite up one of our deans, uh, Christina Coley. Uh, Christina, hello. Good evening. Thank you for being here. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. Our dean role is really unique in that our deans work hand in hand with our teachers in so many ways. Every day they're working with teachers, they're in classrooms, uh, they're getting to know our scholars. Um, and I know one of the, the overriding questions that our families have is what does it actually look like to be an online student? What's the basic structure of learning that happens in our schools? Would you mind sharing a little bit about that? Of course, I'd love to. So the online learning experience is a mixture of synchronous and asynchronous learning. So students are in class um, in their live instruction Monday through Thursday, and it's really a range of times depending on the grade level that your student is in. So in kindergarten, they might be in class for about two hours a day, and in middle school, it could be four hours a day. Um, during that time, there's breaks in their schedule so they can get up and stretch their legs, get a drink of water, um, whatever they need to do. Um, but that learning time typically happens in the morning of their day. Friday, they have asynchronous learning where they do independent work projects. They can meet with their teachers for office hours, get some additional help during that time. But Friday is an independent learning day. Um, and the schedules, I think, are being shared, too, so you can see a little bit more of what that looks like. The students have um, specials, um, one per day as well. So they take music, art, um, PE, and either Spanish or Latin, depending on the grade that they're in. That's right. So they have their core classes with one teacher or depending on what grade level you're in, maybe multiple teachers. And then they go with their specials teachers as well, which I love the fact that they get to work with an art teacher for art class and a Spanish teacher for Spanish class. So um, it's really a beautiful schedule. And also we have reading groups right in the lower grades. What are Correct. those? Yes. Those look like? Yeah, so in the lower grades, kindergarten through third grade, all the students participate in reading groups, um, not just the students who might be struggling, but all students because Reading is such an important um, skill for students to know. And so that happens right outside of their instruction time. Um, so during their instruction time, they'll have math, reading, um, phonics, spelling, science, history, all those great things. And then they have reading groups outside of that time. 
Um, now, one of the other things that we've always, that I was concerned about when we started looking at great uh, online schools is how do you keep the students engaged? What are some of the methods or techniques or pedagogically appropriate activities do you see when you go into classrooms and do you work with your teachers on? Yeah, that's a great question. So as I mentioned, there's that live learning time that happens every day, but it's so important for students to have experiences that are also off the screen. Um, one of the things that was mentioned earlier is that reading is so important to us. We always want students to have a book in hand, something they can hold, something they can annotate, something that they can go back and look at. Um, and so students are always holding those books and reading off screen and also having those books with them during their discussions um, with their classmates and their teachers. Students often um, do projects that are for history or science, um, all their different subjects. They love participating in those. And I think you're going to hear a bit about those later. Um, for science, the students do experiments on a regular basis. Um, they get to do things with their families. They get to um, build machines or watch the life cycle of a plant. Right now, the second graders are, uh, they just planted some seeds. And so they're watching how that seed is growing to see that life cycle. Um, in our live learning time, the teachers utilize many wonderful tools to keep the students engaged, um, not only um, online tools, but instructional tools such as getting the students up and moving. Um, in kindergarten, they often have the students do scavenger hunts around their house. So maybe if they're learning about shapes that day, they might have to go find something in their house that's a square and bring it back and show their friends. Um, and so there's a lot of different opportunities uh, to have fun in the classroom. As mentioned earlier, um, there's some dress up days too. I know that the fifth graders are getting ready for a living history museum and they're going to be dressing up like a historical figure and presenting to their classmates. And so teachers are always trying to find really fun ways to get students um, involved and to love their learning experience. Uh, there's also some really awesome online tools that keep students really engaged, like um, digital whiteboards, so students can collaborate on those. And just like a student would come up to the board in a brick and mortar classroom, they're kind of doing that on a digital whiteboard and collaborating with their peers. Um, teachers also have document cameras so they can see the students doing their work um, in their notebook or see their handwriting and give them feedback. Um, and it's kind of like walking next to your student in a classroom. They get to see them do their work and provide feedback in that way. I love it. And I think that that is, that is so exciting for us to go into classrooms and see that in action. And um, it, is, it is just a beautiful thing. Um, and then I know, you know, every scholar, every student that we have learns at a different speed, at a different rate. Some things come very easily. That same child, something might be a little bit harder for. Uh, assignments might take a little bit longer. What kind of support or structure do we have um, in our schools that really help our scholars um, get that individualized attention? Yeah, so our teachers go above and beyond for all students, but we have some supports that are built in to make sure that happens to meet the needs of all students. So teachers all provide office hours um, where students can come in and ask their questions. They also provide tutoring for students who require more support in their subject area, and they're invited to those times where they'll work either one-on-one -on -one or in a small group with them. Um, we also have reading interventions, math interventions, writing interventions for those students who need just a little bit more support from an expert in that area. Um, we also have a really wonderful program for special needs students who will um, get instruction according to their IEP. Um, and they're really successful um, in the classroom as well with the supports that their own teachers provide them. Um, the teachers and the deans are always in communication about how we can best support all students. Um, we meet on a regular basis to discuss these things, and so no child is ever left behind. Um, we hope to fill all gaps um, that a student might have and um, really do whatever it takes to help every child succeed. I love that. And, and really, we've seen huge success with our SPED population in that it's very individualized. Um, you as a parent and, and the SPED teacher um, and the child are all working together. And typically in a, in a regular school, you might meet with them quarterly or maybe only once a semester as a parent. And then to have that engagement, you're all three on the same page. And I think that's really beautiful. Um, well, Ms. Coley, thank you so much for joining us. I would love for you to come back and answer questions as we go along as well. Um, and thank you for, thank you for being here this evening. 
Um, next, I would, I'm excited to introduce, before we do that, we're going to have a video clip, but I want to set it up a little bit. Um, I, part of the schooling, you know, part of school is communities, getting to know each other and to being together and uh, forming friendships and engaging with others. And uh, to do that, we've invited Andrew Shahan uh, to come talk to us. He's our director of micro schools. He'll tell you more about that in just a second. Um, share with us some of the things, some of the ways that community work. Uh, in Great Hearts Online. Um, but before we do that, let's take a look at a little video clip. You know, most online schools, most virtual schools, they are known, rightly so, for being lonely and procedural and, um, and not connecting families with one another, not having the opportunity for students to connect with their teachers. So that's really important to what we're doing with Great Hearts Online. Get across from your partner. We build a lot of community in our virtual classrooms. That's key. Students are building community with one another, building relationships. They're getting to know their teachers. Today we have close to 400 people here. I have seen several kids run up to their teachers and give them hugs. You know, they love their teacher, their teachers love them, and there has always, up until today, been a screen between them. We have given every student a, a color beaded necklace, and the color corresponds to their grade level, so it's really easy to determine who's a student and then what grade level that student is, and then can, kids can find each other. So we've had some grade level activities that are led by our faculty members. we got to try to keep them in the middle, okay? We had our kindergarten class and our first grade class playing with the, the big parachute, and they were bouncing bubbles up and down. We had our fifth grade students building stick contraptions, right? Like, so getting that engineering, getting those engineering skills to use, um, team building, working together, collaboration, creativity, figure it out. One, two, three, go! Okay, go! We've had a variety of other activities. Right now we have some potato sack races. And so it's it's been a really joyful afternoon seeing those connections made, seeing online friends become in-person friends just for people to connect with one another. Thank you so much for sharing that. That was such a great day. Um, could not believe the turnout. 400 families. It was amazing. Um, and we had great potato sack races. Mr. Shahan, will you please join me as we go along? Hi, Andrew. How are you this evening? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you doing? Doing great. Um, I'm so excited to have you here. Will you first tell us what is a micro school? Yeah, I'll definitely do that. Uh, you know, when I I'm start a little bit behind that, I just want to say that, you know, Great Hearts uh, being able to give the classical education uh, online is really an innovative model. And another thing that we're doing that's really innovative are micro schools. So Great Hearts micro schools are really just in-person learning communities. Um, for Great Hearts Online students. And these are these are independently led by uh, community members. Um, and so this past year, we had the pleasure of starting two. So there's actually already two micro schools. There you go. Perfect. There's two micro schools, Great Hearts micro schools in Phoenix already. So you've got one in Glendale and then one in Scottsdale. And, and the way that Scottsdale, one of the, the ways that these happen are that a community member will say, hey, I really want to put together an in-person learning environment, a micro school for my, my, my children or other members of the community. And so we bring them in and we put them through a fellowship. We train them, we work with them to get their, their in-person learning environment, the micro school, open um, for their kids. These can have slightly different themes, um, but really what they are are just in-person learning environments. I can't hear you, Heidi. I think you might be paused. Um, micro schools are, thank you, uh, micro schools are a way for us to connect in community and they can have all different kinds of ideas and themes. It could be just a group to work together on tutoring. They could be in clubs. They could be, everybody wants to do a theater, lots of different strands in there. Um, but what are some of the other ways we're trying to build community within yeah, yeah. Arts Online? No, it's a, it's a great question. So this year, you know, building on everything you do, you know, year after year, you're just trying to improve. So one of the things that we wanted to do is actually build more community and actually start a little bit smaller. So we started these in-person communities, the micro schools, uh, Phoenix Classical and Victory Garden. They're open in Arizona. But we really want to have this year, we're going to have a menu of events. So every month there are going to be different events. 
Um, and then there's also going to be field trips. So these will be outings. And then there'll be some really big events, like the one you showed that we had at the railroad park, which was a yeah. lot of fun, right? I mean, what they didn't show on there was me racing in that sack race. Okay, no, I did not. They were <laughs> fast enough. So, but there are going to be some big, some big events. But every month there will be in-person events. Now, our goal from the micro schools joining in and working more closely with the online school this year is to actually develop different areas. So not just have the in-person events in certain areas, but really try to form groups. So really looking at different parts of Arizona and if they have a, uh, you know, kind of like a groundswell of, of Great Hearts Online students, really trying to bring them together so that those events are accessible in their areas. Um, now, the exciting thing is, and I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but these groups then can eventually over time form into micro schools, which are in-person learning communities. Um, for families who love Great Hearts Online and the program's working for them, but also want something a little bit more uh, uh, real and in person um, to go on a daily basis. So I'm really excited about that and to see how we develop this year, um, working with the different groups around the state to uh, just continue to build community at Great Hearts. I, I love that. And I think as a parent, you know, the question is, how do I get involved? You know, can I, how do I, how do yeah. I start? Or if I'm not the person that's going to start it, how do Absolutely. I join? How does yeah. this work? You yeah, know. so we'll start. We're going to start recruiting for the. We're we're calling them community leaders, ambassadors. So we're going to start recruiting for those really soon. Obviously, our micro schools, the ones in Phoenix, they're going to take a big role in this in their areas. But we're looking for other people too in other areas to to act, to be ambassadors, to be community leaders, um, so that they can just you know start small, start with some meetups, start with the uh, the different activities that we have, and then let's try to work with those groups to build community. So hopefully. Um, you, you know, in every community, you have access to some in-person um, events and, uh, you know, other friends and things that are, that are close to you. Um, because I think the, you know, the online learning uh, really appeals to, to a lot of people. And we're going to hear uh, great later about why it really appeals to a family. But if you're on here um, and, and that appeals to you, the flexibility, the space, um, well, we want to also provide these uh, community events for you to be even more engaged. I so there'll, there'll be some information coming. Yeah. Yeah, and then they can be something as easy as let's meet up every Friday and go do this thing. Or it could be Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're going to do live class together in our backyard or wherever yeah. it is. So lots and lots of flexibility, lots of, you know, lots of space within those. Uh, and then to also, those too, I don't, know if, yeah, I don't know if people know, too, at the school level. So these, these are bigger things that we're kind of planning, community events. Right. There's a lot of stuff that goes on just kind of organically, like you'd see in a school, like, hey, with kindergarten, let's get together. I know that... Um, one of our micro school uh, founders, her daughter's in kindergarten at the school and they're going to have they're going to get over at her house and have a pool party. You know, so there's lots of little things that go on. Those won't be things necessarily that will be running directly from us. But there'll be a lot of hopefully there'll be a lot of organic, uh, a lot of organic activities that go on. But also then just the menu of things that are there that we are actually kind of leading and involved in. So hopefully lots of community stuff for people to uh, choose what they want to be part of. Yeah. I love it. And there's also virtual ones as well as being in oh, person. Yeah. So there's lots of space. And some talk of maybe some esports in the future, all kinds of cool stuff. I mean, it's, it's a great, great day and time to be a, to be a kid and a family learning. So absolutely. And, and to be able to, in each community, to be able to do that. Thank you so yeah. much. Um, my pleasure. Mr. Shahan, you're going to be on later on to answer all those other questions. And I see a bunch of them populating right now, but cool. I'm excited to have you there. I know you're going to give contact information about who to contact and, all those other pieces. Um, but thank you. Thank you for coming on and oh, sharing that with us. Thank you. That is fantastic. Um, we now probably, this is the meat and potatoes of our show. Actually, the, the person that can speak, the people that can speak best about our school, about whether it works and how it works, are our families. And so we're going to start off with a video, and then I'm going to invite the Ast family to come join us. Really what led us to Great Hearts um, specifically, specifically was my children's academic needs. I have three children who are dyslexic. As a mom, seeing them get the services that they need is just um, amazing. They have excelled, the support is fantastic, the communication is out of this world. If there's any concerns that I have with their academics or where they're struggling, I can email their teacher or the special ed director and immediately I get a response. Well, I don't feel as stressed anymore with, you know, because they get up and we have breakfast together and then they go sit down and, you know, they start their classes with their teachers. And, and so it just, it's a lot less stressful and a lot more freedom. We definitely like to travel as well. 
Um, and so uh, it's given us an opportunity to do that or come to a park, you know, after class. And, and they love just being outside and riding their bikes and their scooters and, you know, just having fun and being kids. If you're a parent who's considering Great Hearts Online or any online school, you've got to go with Great Hearts Online. It gives you everything you need and then some. Thank you again. Um, uh, I would love to invite um, Vanessa and Kylan on. Hi, good evening. How are you? Good, how are you? Doing very well. Thank you so much. I think the best voices are always our scholars and our parents to explain uh, the experience because we can talk about it from our perspective as, as school leaders, but it's really about what is it like for my family? And I know um, for your family in particular, Vanessa, um, you are, uh, first of all, uh, Kylan, will you tell us, will you guys introduce yourselves a little bit about your family and about what grade you're in? Sure, do you want to tell me your grade? Sure, I'll go first. Anyway, my name is Kylan. I'm in fourth grade. And I'm just saying that I think Great Hearts is a very amazing school. And it's helpful because we're traveling mm -hmm. all the time. <laughs> we mean it. Yes, um, my name is Vanessa. Um, I have three children in Great Hearts Online. Uh, obviously, my daughter in fourth grade. And then I have two boys as well, um, second grade and kindergarten as well. And like she said, um, we do travel a lot. My husband, he's actually prior active duty. Um, and now he's a military contractor. So usually his projects are anywhere from four to eight months. And so this really gives us the flexibility to stay together as a family unit. I love that. I love the fact that you can work from anywhere, right? As long as it's in the taste, you know, sign, as long as you're aware of the time zones, right? So yeah, exactly. uh, that's the hardest part. Um, so for your family, uh, how is Great Hearts Online working? Vanessa, if you don't mind sharing a little bit, you've got three, um, three students at home. And um, what are some of the ways that this is working for you guys? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think it's the perfect blend for us. Um, prior to this, we were homeschooling. Um, I was homeschooling my older two at the time. Um, so now I kind of tell people it's more like I've retired and I'm a teacher's assistant. So uh, it's much less of a burden on me. Um, but I still enjoy that level of involvement. I love seeing the spark as they're learning, um, which I'm sure if there's any homeschoolers out there, they know what that feels like. Um, and then, of course, I'm meticulous about the curriculum, the types of things that they're learning in school. So. Um, I love that I can just be next to them as they're learning and I see everything. I'm helping them submit everything. I know um, all that's going on kind of behind the scenes. And then I really do feel like um, there's a partnership between us, between the teachers, between the school overall. Um, a really good example of that at the beginning of the year, my kindergartner's teacher had asked what we wanted him to work on throughout the year. And I explained that he was a bit of a perfectionist. He would get frustrated very easily. And um, so she's really worked with us on that. And so kind of having kind of having that backup from his teacher who he really wanted to please helped a ton. Um, so he's learned a lot. And overall, I really just think there's a lot of strengths. Um, we did consider the brick and mortar. Um, but again, for us, the flexibility is what um, helped us make the decision. I love that my kids have more time to play outside in between class. If they need a little bit of a break, they can listen to some of their favorite music or snuggle or golden doodle. Um, you know, there's just, and there's different things that they're learning that I don't think that they would um, learn those same things if they were in, in a brick and mortar school. So overall, it really works well for us. And it, it truly is a partnership. We know that uh, as with the teachers that we are walking, you know, lockstep with the parents. I love the fact that you have visibility into everything that they're learning. Um, so you see the lessons in a different way. You can hear the teacher, you know, uh, as you're going along. Um, you know what what your children are engaging in in that education. I think that's really, really a powerful, a powerful piece for parents. Um, Kylan, let's ask you a question next. Um, will you share with the 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 scholars and the students that are listening out there what is your favorite subject and why? Okay, sure. I have to say that history is my favorite subject. For one, the teachers, probably my favorite, 
Don't tell this to my teachers. I won't tell. <laughs> it says my old math teacher, Miss Bachman, is became the technical issue person. She's probably the she's super kind and nice. And she's not one of those super strict teachers. And I always think history more of a nice long break into story time. Sometimes we take notes afterwards, but it's fun. And, and, and Kyle, and you've um, gotten to do some projects this year, right, as well? And hit some history projects, some art projects, maybe some science projects. Will you share with our um, with people that are online um, maybe some of the project work you've been doing? Yeah, so I have this project, as you can see, under the fourth grade you can see my newspaper. I burnt the edges of those yellowish papers so we can make it look older. And we have a cricket, so we got creative with that. I thought that was awesome and fun. And you did the drawings on that as well, right? Like those are your sketches. Yeah. I love that. And then I know you have an art project too. Do you mind if we share your art project with everybody? Some of your artwork? Yeah. Anyway. That is just unbelievably beautiful. I cannot believe it. And you did that alongside you. Those were assignments from your art class? Most of them were. I think the top, I can't remember. I think the top left. Oh, yeah. The top one. Actually, all except the ox, the bottom right one, were not in class. We'd go through a slideshow of different art choices and we'd select what which one we'd want to do so as you can see i selected out for my latest art piece i selected the tulips you can see the oranges though those were our secondary colors and the oldest one there is probably the ox the other one i also copied from a slide I love that. And you've been studying the master artist to be able to sort of look at different techniques in that space. Um, Colin, thank you so much. I'm going to come back. Don't worry. Uh, you, get, you get the last question of the day. But first, uh, you have three students at home. Um, it can be overwhelming. I mean, I know as a parent, I just had two. And I, there were days where I thought, oh, my goodness. Um, what are, um, how do you manage? What are some of your techniques, your tricks, some things that you do for your family that make this uh, a very viable and, um, you know, excellent education? Yeah. So um, in the beginning, I will say it was pretty overwhelming. We're a low tech family. Um, so kind of teaching the kids how to use all of the laptops and whatnot, even simple things like for my kindergartner, muting and unmuting, I had to sit next to him. Uh, definitely those first few weeks. And then slowly I would kind of move away until he was completely independent, which was the goal, of course. Um, and even with uploading, um, you know, we found that using the Google Drive app on my phone to just take pictures with my phone and then it sends it to the computer. So now my second grader and my fourth grader are completely independent when it comes to uploading their schoolwork that way. Um, the workload in the beginning was overwhelming, but I will say Great Hearts was fantastic. They sent out surveys to the parents and they were very quick to um, kind of lessen the load. So they really do listen and they, they take quick action. Um, I think just tips for parents in general, you have to stay organized. Obviously when we're at home, it's a lot easier. I actually have um, individual carts that I got from Ikea with their supplies. So they each have their own supplies. They can move it around the house. They usually tend to congregate, even though they have their own individual space for their Zoom classes, they congregate to the dining table or wherever they're comfortable to complete the rest of their work. Um, and then I pretty much just need to keep all of the essentials stocked, like their spalding paper, their blank paper, wide rolled pencils, things like that. Um, just they know where everything's at, they can do it themselves. Um, when we're traveling, it's definitely a lot more difficult. Um, we do have one set of supplies for all of them to share. They do the headphones with their Zoom classes when we're traveling. Um, we even have a roll-up piano that we can travel with so that they have that hands-on for music class. Um, and then the projects just aren't as extravagant because, you know, we usually like to use our cricket back home, but we can't take that with us when we travel. Um, I do have to assist them with the technology, but obviously, again, as time has passed, they've gotten a lot better with it. Um, you know, they just, they learn quickly nowadays. And the school is really reasonable with 
what they expect of each child at each grade level. Um, and then if, at the end of the day, if something doesn't work, it doesn't work. And we just communicate with the teacher and the teacher is really great to understand that. Um, I think one thing that I do have to um, kind of work out with my younger boys is keeping them on schedule. Um, as you heard, their specials will vary throughout the week. Um, so three days a week, they'll have one of their specials. So at the beginning of the year, I did laminate the schedule for them. Um, but I still need to keep them on track because they're a little bit younger. Um, and then they have reading groups twice a week and um, kind of just random meetings that the teachers will set up. So one thing that really helped me was I created um, a wallpaper on Canva for my phone um, and it just has their schedule on it. So I can just click my phone and see who has what class on what day um, really simply. And then I keep a widget on my phone as well with my calendar on the front page so that if a teacher will randomly say, hey, tomorrow at 1230, can I meet with your child so that we can do um, a reading check in? That way I know I get the notification. They're not going to miss their meeting. Um, so yeah, that's helped me a lot as well. And then I'm big on routine. So in the morning, making sure, just like if they're going to brick and mortar, eat well, make sure they're dressed appropriately, make sure they've got all their supplies set aside, which the teachers will actually usually, um, at least in the lower grades, give them a paper that will say, this is exactly what you need in class this day. So we pretty much just have those books, those supplies set aside for them. Their water, their snacks, make sure they go to the bathroom before class starts. <laughs> Um, you know, little things like that. And then in the evening, making sure their workspaces are clean, if there's any supplies to prepare, um, and charging their laptops since this is online. And then um, one other thing, too, that I definitely believe in is the summer slide. Um, so for us, we do plan on doing um, kind of like a loose rhythm of learning throughout the summer. And we can really just kind of focus on those things that I know they need help with. Like my boys still need some help with their handwriting, my daughter with some typing. Um, we'll do math games. We'll do science games. The teacher is even going to send us some readers for them. Um, so yeah, so just different things like that that we'll continue doing so that once school starts back up in August, it's easier not only for me, but for the teachers as well, hopefully. Um, and obviously, I think that's going to look different for each family, but um, that that's what works for us. I love it. I love the structure and order. In fact, one of the first lessons we do it every year is we say, "Where? What is your What does your workspace look like?" Because we want them to set up a space for learning that's really unique to them as a scholar. They're putting on their uniform, and they're going to go to class, and that that space is really important. And I love, I love that. And I also love the fact that they can go to the kitchen table afterwards and all sit around and do their independent work, which is which is exciting. Um, Thank you, thank you so much, Vanessa, for sharing that. And I know that there'll be questions as we go along. Um, I'm going to end with Kylan. Kylan, um, I uh, we're we're a great art school, meaning that we like to read books. We really like to read books. And so I'm just curious, uh, what your favorite classic to keep? What's your favorite book that you've read, and why? Okay, so we've read through many classical, amazing books. And they always make me feel excited and happy, and I just don't get that. I have to say my favorite I've ever read is the book Carry On, Mr. Bowdage. And, of course, if you can't get a hold of these books, they have PDFs during class and attached to their asynchronous assignments. So um, I have to say Carry On, Mr. Bowdage is my favorite book. I like reading with the teachers Sometimes they'd call on students to read with them. It's just very nice. I think the book makes me excited. It's a very well-written book. And they have very good taste of their books. I love that. And you got to talk about it in class and share your ideas and the things that you liked from there? Yeah. That's Sometimes cool. they'd have assignments to where they'd hold group discussions where we answer questions some of those questions are our opinion. Others are based off of our memory. We'd answer questions all together. Then they'd have, have us usually to respond to two classmates saying, I agree or I don't agree and why. So it also helps with the communication with our my classmates. That's how I got to know some of them. And you, and you said uh, you have friends that you've met with outside of class and um, connect with? Yeah, actually, so the, they are each testing sites where we'd usually go to these buildings and sit down, write essays or um, 
do long quizzes of math or reading. And after that, we'd go into this re meeting room and four of, of my classmates came at the same time as me and we just sat there and talked. I love that, I love that. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Any other, any other, um, anything else to add before we go to Q&A? Yes, actually. So I wanted to talk about the ho our homeroom. Oh, yeah. It helps us communicate and just bond with our class. Um, so at the beginning of the school year, we'd introduce ourselves, usually our favorite fruit or color, and then we'd sometimes play games together, figure out hard puzzles, answer about our opinion or um, of certain questions. We even on Thursday have would you other questions where we the chat would be open to everyone and we all chat with each other. Sometimes our teachers would open breakout rooms and we'd go to groups of two to four people and discuss our opinions over things and on Wednesdays, we'd usually have sentences that we'd correct and we'd also go breakout rooms to talk about those. So I just think Great Hearts is an awesome way to bond with our classmates. And it's where most of my friendships have come from. I love that. I love that, that you can connect with others. Um, that is fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Homeroom is a really special time. I know it's a time that you can kind of relax a little bit and get to know each other. and. Uh, have a little fun while you're still learning, right? <laughs> well, thank you all so much. Um, I'd like to invite everyone back on, um, if you don't mind, come join. Mm -hmm. and we'll see if we have any questions from our families in the comment section or from the other platforms. Um, so I'm looking mm -hmm. right now, I think I'm in the right spot, we're good. Uh, let's see, I think almost all the questions have been answered so far. Uh, classical education, any other Q&A questions that we have? Coming forward, let's see. Um, I know one of the questions was, what was the platform that we use? And I'll just take that one. We use uh, Canvas, and uh, Canvas is our primary platform, but you might be in a Nearpod or um, using some of our other uh, partnered tools to go into that, but our main classroom is a Canvas platform. Any other questions? We got the answer. Okay, we'll take one more minute. If not, thank you all so much for being here. Thank you families for joining us and thank you all for presenting and sharing uh, for our families to learn a little bit about more about Great Hearts Online. We hope you have a wonderful evening and we hope to see you all soon.